everybody and welcome to the shop. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be walking you step by step through carving a wake bait, which is a topwater lure used for bass fishing. So as you've seen, I actually have made a sketch of a six inch lure and now I'm cutting it out on the bandsaw. And before we get too far along, this carving is actually going to be a master for a mold. The mold itself will be made of rubberized silicone and you're probably saying, why not just fish the wooden lure and call it a day? It's because I have pretty bad luck when it comes to these big baits. Uh, I'll either break it off on the first giant fish that I hook or I'll just wing the thing off into the first tree. So why not play it safe? Uh, in all honesty, these lures, they, they take a long time to make. So while you're watching me create the center line and top profile of this, they take a long time to make. And I ain't no Marlin baits or Solar baits which if you haven't seen their channels, go ahead and pop over to their YouTube channels and you can get a PhD in bait building. They're masters. Uh, like most of you though, I need to make the most of my time in the water. So having multiples uh, of something like this on hand is a good thing. Plus it's super easy to make an exact copy for my friends who love to chuck big baits as well. I've made glide baits in the past and brought some of that knowledge to this carving, though I've never actually made a wake bait before. So. For that, I chose a bluegill because in most waters up here in northwestern Washington state, you'll find these little guys cruising around and kind of right behind them, you'll find a giant largemouth usually. So I figured that's a good place to start. The details on this lure are being applied with my new flex cut carving knives and little palm chisels, which are super sharp and they cut through basswood like butter. Flex cut chisels and knives, they are just phenomenal and I highly recommend them. So if you haven't heard of them yet, or you are looking to get into wood carving in general, don't do what I did by taking forever to get to this point. So I spent years carving fish with a basic set of chisels, hand chisels from Lowe's and Home Depot, and then also a box cutter. And my, my fish carvings and my lures turned out really good. And you could do that easily, but these make a huge difference. So do yourself a huge favor or ask your spouse or loved one to get you a set of those for Christmas because you will be so, so stoked. So I put it out there on my Instagram page, which is at riverbend under slash woodworks, uh, whether I should carve these scales or just use a paint scheme to add that detail. And the response was definitely you should carve the scales, duh. So what you see here is I'm actually applying the scales with a pattern from my coal wood wood burner. Then I come back with the flex cut tools and I add those details. So that's a bit of the flex cut knives and the chisels themselves and the palm chisels. Now, because this is something for a mold uh, in hindsight, it's always 2020. I should mention that you'll want to over accentuate the, the scale depth of the master to get the right impressioning in the rubberized silicone mold. Maybe it's the type of silicone I was using, but it should have been a little bit deeper. And it may seem tedious, all this hand carving, but I swear it's like a better end result than my usual power carving with a Dremel or a grinder, especially with the scales themselves being the like super tight details you want. So highly recommend doing it by hand. The fins for this master and possibly for the actual replicas are made from both one eighth inch and one quarter inch acrylic sheets. So I cut the acrylic sheets on my scroll saw and then I cleaned them up on my combo sander to get the final shape. The tail is also made from quarter inch acrylic sheet, mainly because I want to shoot for that realistic kind of semi see-through effect, but I might swap that out later for a plastic or silicone tail. The bill is kind of a guess size-wise, and it's also from a quarter-inch acrylic piece. So I center the acrylic tail and mark the edges, and then I use my handsaw and chisels to square up the notch. I then repeat the process on the lip at the angle that I guess will give it the most solid action. <laughs> 
I basically did similar steps for the remaining fins as well, and I seat each one. Uh, these will be cast in resin in the final mold, so there's, they just need to be really sturdy here. Real bait makers are gonna hate this part, but because this is just a master for the mold, I actually just screwed the pectoral fins in place as well as the tail just temporarily because it's gonna be part of the molded body. And yes, it looks pretty dumb like that. Sorry. With the fin locations cut, it's time to section the lure and do a rough radius where the tail will pivot inside of. And I do this with my spindle sander and slowly work up uh, into the right position. So the steps for connecting the front and back sections is to mark where you want the eyelets on the front section in the center of the bait. You want to drill that and install the eyelets. Then line up the back section with the eyelets and then you can draw on where your recesses will be. You can make pretty quick work of the uh, recesses with a handsaw and then clean it up with the chisels and it might take a little bit of finesse to, to figure out the right depth, but then once you're there, you're ready for the through bolt thingy. Uh, the hardware that I'm using for this master is way overkill and I'm using that so I can actually take this bait apart during the build and I can do little tweaks and put it back together. The actual final will be a single solid piece of like eighth inch stainless steel that will be epoxied in place but for this rough bait I needed it removable. All right, so straight out of the Marlin Bates playbook, I am bathing the lure in super glue to give it a basic seal for water testing. You can't really trust the seal for very long, but it's enough to verify that the lure tracks right and sits right in the water. Speaking of water, it's time to chuck this little thing into the photo aquarium, which if you haven't seen that video yet, I'll add a link to it because it's actually a really cool and easy build for something that you can take out into the water with you and gives you a great look at the fish that you catch while they revive themselves. Now, I cut some basic steel plugs uh, in different sizes and weights, and I use a magnet to connect them to the bottom of the bait. This helps me to figure out how much weight I'll need to put in each lure and where, or at least it'll get me pretty close with the wooden lure. And look at that, it rides like a champ. So it's time to hit the water for some testing. All right, so we are right down the road from my shop and we're gonna test this thing to actually see if it swims. So we've already tested out kind of in stride, but family field trip, Let's see if it actually works. No geese agree, they all took off. I was, I was holding my eye, it looked like it jumped. Wait, wait, wait. wait, what's it doing there, Keston? Wiggling. It's wiggling? Is it, what's it doing? Wiggling. Wiggling. Wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> Maybe that's what we're gonna call this lure. All right, I don't know about you guys, but I think that went pretty darn well. So now the next step for me is to disassemble this guy again do some final cleanup on it to get it ready for a mold. And then I will pour some resin castings of this lure. So unfortunately, this little guy probably isn't destined to see, you know, the face of a largemouth bass anytime soon because of the hardware I use is super heavy duty. And honestly, it, it's pretty close tolerances. It might pull free if an eight pound largemouth decides to grab hold of this thing. That would make me cry. 
But now it is time to make a mold of this little guy and I'm gonna disassemble it, clean it up, get it ready to go, and we're off and running.